Shields up, Iron Breakers. We're kind of here coming at you with another video. Welcome back to Monster Hunter World. And today we're going to be talking about Arch Tempered Namiel. If I sound a little bit lower energy than usual, that is because I was up late last night until like four in the morning wailing on Arch Tempered Namiel. And when you're, when you're quarantined in your home with your children, you don't really get to sleep in. Like you wake up when they wake up, and that's just the way that it is. So please do bear with me because right now I'm having trouble just articulating words to begin with. But, you know. It is what it is. Anyway, before we get started, I would like to mention that in uh, yesterday's video, I talked about how they were going to add two new event quests into the game. One of those event quests was going to allow you to farm for high tier decorations, and the other one was going to allow you to farm for high grade um, armor spheres. Unfortunately, those quests were not added at the same time as Arch Tempered Namiel as I thought they were going to be. Uh, those quests will most likely be added at a later date. I would expect about two weeks or from now, give or take. Um, so for now, all we really got was Arch Tempered Namiel and all of the new layered armor. All of that layered armor, by the way, is going to require Arch Tempered Namiel tickets, which I believe that in total you're going to need about nine if you want to craft uh, Namiel's armor as well as all of the layered armor. Some of you might be like me, like, hey, wait a minute, where's the Guardian armor? The Guardian armor is actually on the high rank side of the um of the layered armor so keep that in mind it's gonna be at the very bottom but on the high rank side not on the master rank side master rank side you have the artian you have uh the black belt and you have the two new earrings that you can have for your characters but you know that's what you're gonna get on that side so first i guess we can talk a little bit about uh namiel's gamma armor uh, this has probably been leaked like God knows how long ago uh, because people data mined it. But this was the first time that I actually got to see the set. And I think a lot of people are not going to like uh, what's on offer here. But, you know, it is what it is. So this is what the set looks like. Which, uh, in terms of looks, it actually looks really good, in my opinion. It's a really good looking set. It's got uh, a lot of uniqueness to it. It's got a lot of glowy bits and whatnot. And you can paint uh, some parts on the set, like if we actually go here, you guys can see which parts you can paint. Now, the biggest problem from a visual standpoint of this set is that massive friggin' camel toe on a male character. Like, I I don't know what you were thinking. I don't know if this is like copy-paste from the female version of the armor. I don't know what's going on there, and to be honest, I don't want to know what's going on there, and I just want everybody to see it, because now you can't unsee it. I'm sorry, I know that a lot of people hadn't noticed it, but there is a massive friggin' camel toe on the male version of Namiel's armor, and I, I can't wear those pants, like, sorry, <laughs> I'm not into it. But anyway, uh, besides that, let's actually talk about the, the stats that we have on the armor. Uh, they're not great. I mean, you can make them work for certain builds, but overall, in terms of like meta and stuff like that, this set is not going to be changing a lot of things. You have Stamina Surge and Tool Specialist on the head. It does have good slots, but I don't think a lot of people are running level 3 Stamina Surge. It can be useful. I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying, you know. Then on the chest piece, I actually kind of like the fact that it came with 4 Evade Window, but then it comes also with two water attack and it's like look when it comes to elemental attack i like to have that stuff separately from my armor pieces so that i can make them viable for multiple builds um so yeah that just kind of like eh, don't know also the slots aren't great and there's now the evade window 5 charm so i don't know how valuable this could potentially be then we have the gloves which come with marathon runner level three and two decent deco slots as well as blight resistance i could see this being useful for dual blades uh but beyond that i just don't know and then we have what is for me personally the best armor piece uh in this whole set which is the tentacle coil because it comes with level three evade extender i don't really care for the recovery speed but level three evade extender and decent slots that's not bad. I'm actually using it on one of my Gunlance builds right now because Evade Extender, as you guys probably know, is extremely valuable for Gunlances. So, you know, this this for me is like the best piece. And then we have level four Constitution on the boots, which adds, I mean, I don't know, man. If you want level four Constitution, I guess you can go for it. But overall, it's not really a set that is going to shake up the meta. The... Um, 
the set bonus is pretty much the same that we had on the original Namiel. So again, it's not something that is going to see a lot of use, I don't think. Even though you can kind of make some interesting builds if you combine this with some of the cool Taroth weapons that we've been getting, because a lot of them have a ton of element that is not awakened. So I don't know, maybe you can make some fun with that, but you guys know, in terms of meta, it's really not going to shake it up. Uh, I myself might be using the belt on a couple of things, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, in terms of the encounter itself, I've seen a lot of people complain about how it's really hard, it's really challenging, it's... Uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of people have brought out the old chestnut artificial difficulty. Because she doesn't really have that many new moves. Uh, she's got a couple of things that she does new. I've noticed that sometimes she'll just like, when she's punching the ground trying to get to you, she'll form waves. Not always though, it appears to be a little bit inconsistent, even though sometimes she'll punch me in the water, waves will not come out. Other times she'll punch in the water, waves will come out. Uh, she still does um, most of the stuff that she's done previously. It seems that she drops a lot more slimy water than usual um, in, the, in the tempered version or the regular version. Uh, and also, she charges up a lot faster and a lot more frequently, which leads to a lot more ultimates than you encounter if you're fighting her normally. Like, if you're taking your sweet time fighting her normally, you'll usually get like maybe two ultimates. If you are taking your sweet time fighting her in Arch Tempered, you'll get like four or five. So more than twice the amount of ultimates. Um, so, you know, it, it's going to depend on how fast you kill her, how many times you're going to have to deal with that particular move of hers. Uh, and besides that, she also um, has this thing that she does now where she goes up in the air and she does the, th the, the zappy thing with the wing like four, five, six times in a row non-stop before she comes back down. But overall, she's just like more aggressive, uh, faster, much faster than the original Namiel. And that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot more to it. And I know that some people are going to disagree, but from my viewpoint, when I play the Gunlands, I don't notice that much difference between this and the regular version besides speed, often of all, um, how often she does her ultimate, and um, a couple of more moves that hit uh, a little bit harder. So a lot of people have been uh, really upset about this. And I, I'd like to, to talk about this a little bit, which is um, about something that I feel like a lot of players in general are, you know, you go for the meta builds that you see the really pro players use, uh, people who are doing speed runs and stuff like that. And you grab those builds and then you want to go and you want to kill every single monster with them. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine if that's what you want to do, if that's the way that you want to play the game. I'm not here to tell anyone you need to play this way or you need to play that way. I'm, I'm not I'm not here. Like I'll, I can give you a couple of advices on how I think you should tackle certain things, but at the end of the day, it's always it always should be the player's choice what they choose to do. But I would like to point out the fact that in order to use the same gear that a speedrunner is using, you're going to have to get the same level of skill as that speedrunner, which I think a lot of people struggle with the fact that maybe, maybe there is such a thing as skill when it comes to video games and, you know, certain things that you see people do in videos online are going to be quite challenging for an average hunter to achieve. Some people just think like, oh, I'll equip the same armor pieces that they have and boom, Bob's your uncle. This is easy. That's not the case. And, and I say this as someone who mostly uses uh, what, what we call in the community comfy sets. Comfy sets, which means comfortable sets. Sets that I can make a lot of mistakes in without dying. This is, this is something that I use often. Like, sure, I'll try to stack a bunch of attack on it and crit boost and affinity and all this stuff into my sets to deal more and more damage. But at the end of the day, I will only go on to a hunt with a set that I feel comfortable with unless I feel like challenging myself. And that's the thing. I, I feel like people were expecting to jump into Arch-Tempered Namiel and just wail on her and beat her like she's nothing. And apparently a lot of people are struggling with that. So you have to make a decision here, which is um, some weapons are going to be better for her than others. In my case, this particular time, I actually have a bit of an advantage because long shelling gun lance is just shreds her completely it like the encounter is barely even challenging if you use long shelling gun lance which is something i noticed last night for my first kill i used white shelling seven gun lance uh i didn't really cart it was 
it was fairly easy. It took me like 18 minutes or something because I was still getting used to the moveset. And today I've lowered it down to like 15 using long shelling because long shelling is more solid for her than wide if you just want to have like a relaxed time. And uh, what other weapons I haven't been able to beat in her, uh, beat her solo yet, which uh, it, it's one of those things that now you have to make a decision. Like, look, if you want to take the weapon that you like the most or your main weapon to her and you find that to be particularly challenging, you either practice and you get better at the fight and then you eventually beat her, which is what I did uh, for Colf to Roth. For those of you who watched my stream uh, a couple of days ago where I was just like, nah, dude, I'm gonna kill Colt to Roth with the Gunlands because I was I was really struggling to kill Colt to Roth with the Gunlands. I was able to kill her with a lot of other weapons, just the Gunlands wasn't doing it because of the inherent disadvantages that the Gunlands bring, brings with it with the Wormstake Blast and a bunch of other stuff, right? And, you know, I stayed in there for a good three hours or so until eventually I was like, yep, got her. I, I know what I need to do in order to do it. And, you know, it takes it took me three hours. It could take somebody else half an hour. It doesn't really matter. But you just need to make that call, which is, do I want to force this with my weapon? Uh, do I want to change my build? Which is another thing that you can do. Like something that I would advise for people that are struggling with Arch-Tempered Namiel is bring in the, the waterproof mantle. That helps out a lot because you don't get thrown around by the waves that she does if you're wearing that. And it also brings with it a considerable amount of uh, water resistance. If you are still struggling at that point, maybe considering consider removing some of the damage decorations that you have on your set and put some more resistances on it, particularly thunder resistance, because, you know, even though water deals a considerable amount of damage, I feel like the bulk of her damage is actually the thunder. The thunder is the one that really hurts, and having a bit of thunder resistance might allow you to survive her ult if you happen to fail uh, dodging it or something like that. So it's really about adapting and at the end of the day if you don't want to adapt you don't have to you want to go after her balls out friggin full-on affinity full-on crit boost full-on everything damage with whatever weapon you happen to be playing that's fine just be prepared that this is an end game challenge this is like the one of the higher tiers of difficulty when it comes to Monster Hunter World. So you might fail, you might die, you might get hard punished for doing something. And that's not artificial difficulty, it's difficulty. You know, there are weapons that can go around uh, some of her moves. There are weapons that will do better than others. In this case, it just so happens to be that for me, I'm actually in the advantage side with the Gunlands. It's not always that. Sometimes other weapons have an advantage. But in general, heavy weapons that come with a beefy shield will make this fight considerably easier than nimble weapons. Again, always depending on your skill. Like, the only weapon I've killed her solo so far has been uh, the Gun Lance. And then there's, there's one more thing, which is um, killing her solo is a lot easier than killing her in multiplayer depending on, you know, the quality of your team, naturally. But you're just going in with random people. Uh, killing her in multiplayer is going to be considerably harder than killing her in single player. So keep that in mind. If you're struggling because you're teaming up with randoms, uh, going in solo is going to be significantly easier. But other than that, there's not really a whole lot for me to say in regards to this encounter because... You know, it's the same thing that we've had before, it's just faster, like, try to dodge the moves that deal the most damage and counterattack her. If she uh, is, like, dried up, if she's got the, the brown hue in her body, that means that you're gonna deal less elemental damage. If, on the other hand, she's fully charged and she's all blue glowy and stuff, it means she's gonna take additional elemental damage, but it also means that she's gonna be ready for her ultimate, which can come at any moment. When she does her ultimate, you want to make sure that you want to try and sheath your weapon and do a Superman dive. If you cannot do that in time, then you want to try to block it. And if you can't do a Superman dive in time, or you can't block it in time, you're going to take a hit. And you might even die. That's just the way these things go. Maybe bring your Palico with uh, the, the healing thing, the Vigor Wasp, you know? That'll help you out instead of bringing a more offensive Palico that maybe is buffing you or doing other things. Bring the one that heals you. There is many options that you can like tailor around how to handle a fight. And this is not just for Arch-Tempered Namiel, this is just like common sense. Hey, you're struggling with something that does a lot of fire damage? 
Maybe equip fire resist. Maybe eat for fire resistance. Maybe play a little bit more defensively. Or be prepared to die and play as offensively as you want. That, you know, that's a trade-off. Like, a lot of the times you guys need to understand that the videos that you guys watch on YouTube for speedruns and stuff like that, of the, of the more skilled players, like... It's not like they get up one day and they're like, well, today I'm gonna go speed run this monster. They equip their set, they go in there, wham, bam, done. There's a lot of attempts that are made when you're trying to, you know, bring world records and stuff like that for speed runs. And usually if they mess something up or there's some kind of like AI thing that the monster does that is out of their control, they'll just reset the run and start over. And again, and again, and again, and again, I guarantee you, that most speedrunners that you watch on YouTube have died in this game much more often than the average player because they don't care. Because they're just there to, you know, to really achieve their own peak performance, their own objectives. And again, I'm not criticizing them. I'm not saying that any of this is wrong. I'm just saying that you can't expect one day to equip like a speedrunner set and say, hey, I'm a speedrunner. <laughs> That's not how it works. So in monsters like this, you will suffer. It, it's just that simple. And then it's it's really up to each individual person. Like, do I want to become better with this weapon? And do I want to beat this monster with this weapon and with all of these aggressive skills? Or do I want to tone down things a little bit and get some defensive skills of my own and have an easier time with it? It's that simple, team. Either way, hope you guys are enjoying Arch-Tempered Namiel. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be grinding her all that much because there really isn't that much of a point. There's a, a couple of layered armors and her armor itself is not that great, so I'm not overly concerned. I'll probably do another live stream where I'll hunt her, one or two more live streams maybe, where I'll be hunting her. But mostly I, I want to go help people get some more gold to Roth because I know that there's still people struggling with that. And uh, yeah, that's going to be what we're going to get for the foreseeable future, I feel like, because, you know, as I told you guys, Latreon has been delayed. Uh, we're going to be getting, in about two weeks, I would imagine, the uh, additional event quests that are going to let us farm decorations and farm uh, armor spheres for anybody that needs that stuff. And, you know, then just button down the hatches, uh, get caught up if you're still, like, behind other players, because I know that there's a lot of people that are behind. They're like, oh, man, I don't even know if I have enough time to catch up and whatnot. You have plenty of time now, <laughs> you know? Like, catch up to your friends, you know, do grinding lands, do whatever you feel like it. But yeah, that's what we're gonna be getting. I can't wait to hear more updates from the monster on the team, but more importantly than everything, make sure that you stay safe out there. Everybody stay safe out there. Uh, it looks like my own country is gonna be, um, you know, lifting the state of emergency. We're gonna start opening stuff up. Uh, so I, I believe this is probably gonna start being the case uh, in a lot of countries out there and states in America and all that stuff. Uh, so it is important for everybody to be aware of the fact that this isn't over. We all still need to be very careful. We all still need to wear masks, social distancing, all of that stuff. Because otherwise, we're all just gonna put ourselves right back where we started with ridiculous amounts of death and devastation and that's not what we want so stay safe out there everybody stay safe out there monster hunter team monster hunters iron breakers random strangers that happen to come across this video and uh yeah thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video hit the like button if you did not enjoy the video hit the dislike button feedback is important feedback which you can also leave in the comment section down below i'll see you guys on the next one stay safe stay healthy stay strong and may your shields never break mm -hmm.